What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Music Mangs podcast. I'm Sean Farahani, joined today by Ace Spurly. Austin Spurl is here. And today is our fifth episode, so we wanted to do something real special. We brought in a really special guest. He's in album mode, so we're going to be respecting his time. This is going to be just a quick check-in, but he really needs no introduction. Welcome to the show, Felly. What's up, y'all? How we doing? <laughs> <laughs> so um, as I just mentioned, you're in album mode. What are some of the themes that you're trying to convey through this next project? Um, this next project. <laughs> this next project is about youthfulness. Mm. And uh, and keeping keeping the the childlike flame alive in you and and just being authentic with that um i'm getting a little older and i think everyone is as well i mean there's no choice you don't really have, <laughs> don't have an option but um i have like a lot of fans who i feel like are kind of on this journey with me so i'm sort of seeing it in front of my eyes too just watching everyone get a little bit older and shit um but this next one's sort of about like uh keeping that fire alive, like not letting it like, because it's just, it's just societal things and it's like preconceived ideas that sort of make you want to be, you know, normal or act older or be regimented or just be like, like my stepdad used to say, like, I would like have these crazy dreams and I'd be like, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, wait till you get older. And I was always like, fuck that. Like, and so it's <laughs> sort of like in attempts to, not be like rebellious against that and be like, fuck that, I'll never get old, but sort of just be like, it doesn't have to be like that. So yeah, just youthfulness, I'd say. Yeah, I really love that you took that in kind of a philosophical way. One thing that I'm really wondering is you mentioned the the breaking free of the change that kind of society puts you on. What are some of the ways that you practice that in your day-to-day life to, to break free of the mold that society has tried to put you in? Hmm. Um, I think you're bound to get caught every day, every time, everyone, everywhere, like there, everything is a trap, like I think. Um, and so, but, but each trap teaches you something. So if you could, if you could learn that no matter what you're faced with, although it seems daunting, it's actually teaching you something and redirecting you somewhere else. Um, even the ugly shit or the things that you don't want to deal with, or like the things that are like really uncomfortable to deal with, like, um, they're actually like guiding you. Um, so it's just sort of taking those, those shitty things or those uncomfortable things and just saying like, thank you for showing me like where I'm not, you know, and showing me where I need to like go to. So if you do something in some way, it's like, that was so weird or blah, blah, blah. It's like kind of helps to move you to somewhere else and you're like just growing, you know? Um, but what I actually do like tactilely, I guess, or tangibly is a better word um i mean i meditate i meditate in the morning and the night um try to chug water i've been drinking celery or not celery water um the fuck i've been drinking uh italian parsley water Ooh. just clear your system taking like sea moss um sun get some sun <laughs> like have real conversations open your heart to people like don't just speak in like like I was just doing this this morning and I wasn't connecting with someone because I was just speaking like um, platitudes. I was just speaking like generic statements, like mm. it's all going to be okay, blah, 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 rather than just like being there with them and like giving them like a hug, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just like feeling the moment with them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all over the place answer, but hey. Well, that's, <laughs> that's pretty freaking dope. You seem to kind of, you know, you portray that, you know, it's, that's who you are. And I feel like I feel that in your music too. So I think that answer kind of exactly describes what I understood from you. Um, so going back to, to the album, um, I was just thinking, you know, just over a year ago now, uh, Mariposa was released, which is, you know, it was one of my favorite. It was top five album for me for last year. So it's a really dope album. Um, Thank you. So wondering for this next album, what have been your stylistic influences um, that have kind of, you know, influenced this album and really what separates this from Mariposa? Um, this next album, which I haven't really announced yet. Um, so it's sort of like trying to like kind of swerve around that, but like, uh, <laughs> but it's it's me tapping back into hip hop. Um, mm. I, I don't think like Mariposa, I was like, I wanted to sort of be free from hip hop, but like I had to sort of honor that I um, 
like come from that and like have that in me but this one i'm like fully embracing that and being like we're doing we're like i'm rapping better than i've ever rapped i'm gonna go harder than i've ever gone on hip-hop and like i'm just like pretty much like i'm not done with you yet like let's 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 get these bars out and then yeah i usually go like if i go to the left one way i'll probably bounce back and do something over here so if mariposa had like the guitars and shit on it then this one's gonna have like fucking headbanging rap shit like yeah, yeah. and well, then the, I, and then the next one will probably be like you know like a you know all violins or something <laughs> oh well even like just not even talking about the album like you know you're you've been releasing a lot of singles since mariposa has come out and you kind of hear i mean even recently with slim john like your your verse is a lot you know it's it's bars like you know it's it's back to bars so i definitely i definitely feel that um to go into kind of like your latest uh your latest single that just came out well single uh, song whatever you want to call it with code of the friend was just released this past wednesday you know what was it like working with coda and what was um you know yeah just what, what was it like going and working with coda and putting this doing collaboration because your last project only had one you know feature which was um carlos santana which is nothing to scoff at but like you're back into collaborating so talk about that yeah, um, it's funny because I started to hear about Coda and then listen to his stuff and just thought it was dope. Um, then I hit him up and he was like, do you remember hitting me up back in the day for a move for a video? He used to do videos. Um, so he had this like video company and stuff. And I was like in Connecticut and he was in New York. And like I knew these New York uh, video guys and I was like, yo, like, let's do a video. It didn't end up happening. Fast forward five, five years or something. And I and he's making raps now. And I'm just like, I just like his, I just like how he raps. Like, I just, I just think he like, he has like a very, like, I don't know if humble is the word, but like, he's just honest, he's real. Um, and so like, yeah, we did, we didn't do that one in person because it kind of like the COVID stuff and he's in New York, I'm in LA, but we, we, we were texting, sending verses back and forth, talking about like that type of shit. But um, yeah, I think it was really dope how it came out um he did his verse and then I was like do do something with the chorus at the end I was like do your take on the chorus and he says woke queens only shop whole foods which is like my favorite line ever so <laughs> that <laughs> line definitely stuck out to me that was that was such a good line because I'm like talking about like beach blonde like little white chicks and he's like woke queens I'm just like yeah that's that's the stuff like go there like it was a little alley-oop right there but yeah. you guys are on that same wave of um like meditating, alkaline water, you know, spirituality, that type of thing. So that's an awesome collaboration for sure. Um, so one thing I was wondering is you mentioned saying that your your bars are the best they've been right now. Have you been having these moments in the studio where you lay down a track or lay down a verse and you're like, fuck, this is like really good. This is like a breakthrough. Have you been having any of those? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I had it kind of the other day, or like yesterday or two days ago, because I wanted one more track that had like some rap shit, because like, it still all has like the fun, so, like, it still all has like the colorful chords and stuff that I that I love. But then I was just like, yo, am I like even good at rapping? Like, and so I sat there and I wrote the verse in like three minutes and it was just like, but and then I like recorded it. And I was like, you know, it's not perfect, but it's like it was sick that I was just able to do it like that. Like, I was just like, whoa, like, and like, I didn't even want to do it. Like, that was just funny. Like, like on this particular one, usually I'm like, yo, yo, bars, bro. but like, yeah. I, was, I was like, sort of like, so overly, like overly aware that I was like writing a verse while I was writing a verse, but it was just like coming. I was just like, whoa, look at this. Like, look what we have here. <laughs> like, it, it was Are funny. those, are those some of the most fulfilling moments for you when you have those little breakthroughs and especially when you're not expecting them like then? Absolutely. Like, absolutely. Like fucking, if you don't get that feeling for like too long, you feel like it's like a need to have sex or something. It's like, it's like a desire that like you need to fulfill in some way. It's like, if you go months without getting that feeling out or having some, or not even just sex, just like some sort of like real connection with someone or something that like reminds you of truth and like creation and like God, like 
then uh, you kind of get stir crazy. And so like when it comes, when you've been working for it or, or you just forget about it and then it comes to you, you, you leave the studio like, ah, oh, like I can breathe again. Like, ah, uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, so Feli, I know we're, we're running short here, but I wanna ask you one, one quick question. Um, yeah. So I was thinking, you know, Mariposa came out right at the beginning of COVID. So you weren't able to, you know, go on tour, or perform any live shows. What have you been missing the most about performing live? Sort of back to what I was just saying with like, like connection, like, mm -hmm. like literally, like I appreciate talking to you guys and like hearing that you guys are listening. Cause it's like, you you're in here for a year and then you, you, you don't even realize that people are still listening and care or, or like have a, yeah. like it's actually doing anything. Like right now, these days you like, you drop a song or something. It's like, you get like some likes and a comment. Like that shit does not do it for me, bro. Like, I don't, that does not, I don't think it does it for anyone. Like, well, I got my likes or something <laughs> like, fuck man. I need to like, I need the real thing. I need a fucking, I need to like be, you know, I need to shake someone. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I just just being reminded that people are still still out here, and and it's coming back. Obviously, it's like we're we're getting right back to it. But yeah. I went to the fucking bank the other day, and I was and someone like recognized me, and I was just like, I was blown away that they knew me. But like two years ago, if you did that, I'd be like, it would just be like a walk, like normal shit. But yeah yeah well whenever the live shows start coming back up you better come to the east coast because we will be here we're from we're from uh i guess dmv slash pittsburgh philly area you're from florida sean so yeah i'm actually from east florida <laughs> oh yeah i was gonna ask i was gonna ask so you're you're from florida you're from philly uh yeah I'm, yeah i'm from i'm i'm from pittsburgh i'm down in uh the dmv in uh washington dc right now Sick. yeah but we met at uh we met at penn state cool yeah cool. So you better be coming here. You better be coming here. We'll be we'll be front row. We'll be freaking doing the mo going in a mosh pit, just hurting people. Uh, <laughs> I you said we'd be doing Molly. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so we'd be on Molly in the front row. Like, like no. shit, are you ready to rock? <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Feli. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, to everyone listening, we really this is a special episode. Uh, 15th, Sean. I think you said the fifth episode. This is our 15th episode. Did I really? Damn. So. <laughs> So no, we appreciate you guys for listening. I hope you really enjoy this short preview of what's going to come from Feli. So thank you, Feli. Cheers, y'all. Yeah. Appreciate you guys, man. Stay, uh, stay safe, and I'll, I'll see you when I'm, uh, when I'm out back on the road. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. Peace out, homies. <laughs>